Hey guys, it's Summer here. I got a quick little video for y'all just to teach new players how to play evil. It's going to be quick, simple, to the point. I'm going to teach you everything that I can think of that a new player would need to know. Make sure you watch to the end for some very important information that I need to know to survive this game. Thank you. Enjoy. I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. You're going to have tabs up here you can go through and each one's going to give you different things. First and foremost, if you're a new player, the most important uh, tab is not going to be play but it's actually going to be a game guide. This tab here is going to tell you everything about the game. Any little thing is going to be in this guide. This is the most important thing. I just want to go over and make sure you guys know that that is there for you, which is a lot more helpful than the actual tutorial itself. I'm going to go ahead and host a game and put it on advance. I'm getting in the lobby now. So once you get in the lobby, you can come over here and this is going to be where you can change all your settings for uh, the game itself if you're a lobby host. This lady here is where you can customize your avatar and your home. Lots of little things you can do in here, right? In order to customize it, you have to go to the store to buy a lot of these things. The store is over here. This is where you can buy a lot of things. Right now, there's a lot of Christmas stuff going on. So, you know, Christmas, woo. You need coins in order to buy stuff from the store. And you get about 25 coins per match whenever you want a game. So we're going to go ahead and just get into a game start the game up i'm the only player so it's gonna mess itself up but that'll be all right so you can change your name make it whatever you want randomize it it's gonna randomize it so dash that's cool these are all the characters that you can play it's gonna slowly pick them away until you get the one you are it's gonna tell you your abilities right there everything that you want to know is gonna be here so you get double voting your counts count as two votes which is pretty important and then you can announce your role so you could hard claim mayor and after you hard claim mayor you get double the coinage every day. So instead of getting 10 coins per day, you get 20. So if I go ahead and go, woo, I'm mayor, it'll do that up there and I'll get the coins, right? To begin with, you're gonna have different stores. You're gonna have your magical store over here. This is where you're gonna wanna buy a tripwire almost immediately if you're a villager. You're gonna buy the tripwire, you're gonna open up your inventory with Y, press Y to open up your inventory, and press A to activate your tripwire. You'll see that little square down there with the tripwire above your inventory, that means it's activated. More important things from the store is the Tome of Death. You use this to see the rolls of dead players. Fireworks are annoying, don't ever use them. Holy Water is what you use to kill necromancer zombies. Sleeping Powder you can use to put other people to sleep. No matter what, they will not wake up that night. You would buy that and put in the cauldron. So that's basically going to be it. Also, as a mayor, you can use your first ability or your second ability to get plus 10 coins from other vendors. From any vendor, you can get plus 10 coins. During the night, this is where conspirators will have the chance to be able to run around and try and kill. If a conspirator were to run in my house right now, my tripwire would be activated because no one's put me to sleep, no one's done anything to me. So my tripwire would be activated and I would have a chance to run and hopefully get away from the conspirator. If I did not have that tripwire, the conspirator could run right up and kill me right in my bed. Another thing that can happen during the night is a uh, ritualist can go and jump off certain areas to damage other people. The goal right now for the night is just simply to try and survive and get to the next day. During the next day, you're gonna come out and you're gonna wanna see if anyone's dead. If anyone's dead, then you're gonna go and you're gonna get their body and report it. And once you report the body, it'll take you here to the center. And just like Among Us, you're gonna then try and talk with people, figure out who killed who, you know, if there's any evidence against anyone, right? That's what you would do. I wanna go ahead and run around to more stores while I have time. As you can see, days and nights are very short. This is a day and night schedule game. This store over here, the Traveling Tavern, will give you food. You can buy food to heal. So if I buy herbal tea and click on it, it's going to give me 50 health over the next 60 seconds. Do damage to you or anyone you're going to damage any, any way, you're going to want to go over there to get the food to heal up. The next store that's pretty important is this lady over here. She's going to be where you can buy all your ingredients to build potions. The three potions you can build is poison potion, antidote potion, and protection potion. You can use a protection potion to protect yourself through the night. You're gonna put the protection potion in your cauldron and during the night you will not take any damage whatsoever. The poison potion you will put in someone else's cauldron to poison them. It, they'll start taking two ticks of damage or two damage every tick. Then the antidote potion you're gonna put in the cauldron, whether it's your cauldron or someone else's cauldron, to antidote someone if they are poisoned. Those are the three poisons and the, they're pretty important to get. And they're pretty important to know. Now we're gonna go ahead and survive another night you know, uh, I'm the only one in the lobby, so I really don't got to worry about anything. Now, after surviving another night, once again, you want to check, see if anyone's dead, yada, yada, yada. On day three, I'm going to go ahead and show you the last vendors. You're going to run down here. Keep on running down here. Now, the next vendor is going to be up here by the blacksmith. 
This is the blacksmith vendor. You can buy a barricade, a key, and boots. You're going to want boots if you're a conspirator. You put them on and they will prevent you from taking damage from traps, spikes, and all that stuff. A key you will buy and you would activate the key like I activated the tripwire. You're going to activate the key by your door to lock your door. Barricades you're going to want to buy and put in your house to prevent other conspirators from coming in your house and killing you so quick. It will give you a little bit more time to be able to run around and whatnot and uh, hopefully escape and live to the next day. That's basically it for all the shops above the ground. There is one more shop below ground as conspirator, but only conspirators can go there. So you're going to have a bunch of roles. You're going to have villager roles, which is the citizen. The citizen can sprint and place barricades. They're decent. You're going to have the mayor, which is who we are right now. You're going to have the ghost whisperer. The ghost whisperer can use an ability to tell you if there is a dead body and it will point you in the direction of the dead body. You can also collect remains, which means you can go to a dead player's chest and get whatever is in that dead player's chest. Life before death means you can uh, go, you can use that ability on a dead player and it will tell you about dead player's role. After that, you're going to have Seer. A Seer can place a watchful eye, which is basically a, a camera you place outside and it will show you everything that goes on within the range of the camera. Then you have Track Target. You use Track Target, you put it on someone who you suspect is bad and it will track them. And if they are out during the night, then it will show their footsteps. You can also use Blinding Light. Which you use blinding light when you're using watchful eye during the night when you're using your camera. You're going to use blinding light to blind anyone who comes through your, your camera area. After that, you have trapper. A trap will replace spike traps, which will do 60 damage if anyone steps over them during the night. You have snare trap, which will trap someone during the night. If anyone steps on a snare trap, they cannot move. You have cow traps which do crawl traps. When someone walks through them at night, they take a small amount of damage and walk slower for 10 seconds. So cow traps slow down speed and do, I think, 10 or 15 damage. You have one with nature, which means you have the chance of uh, gathering two ingredients on the ground instead of one. That means whenever you pick up a mushroom, you have a chance of getting two instead of one. You have survivalist vision, which means in your mini-map, any items that you can pick up off the ground will show up on your mini-map. Detective, a very fun role. You can use inspect, which means you will go up to someone and uh, use that ability on a live player, and it will tell you a role that they are not. You have look for clues, which you will go to a player's house, go up to their desk, and search their desk. When you do that, it will give you three cards. One card will be a villager role, one card will be a conspirator role, and one card will be a, a stranger role. You're going to want to keep drawing from that desk until you get their villager card. You will know it's their villager card when on the back of the card is brown. Let's say you go to someone's desk and you draw a trapper, and then you go and ask them, hey, what is your role? And they go, I'm Ghost Whisperer, but you just draw a trapper from their desk. That means they are bad. You want to then not freak out, go to the center, ring the bell, which I will do right now, right? I'm going to leave my house. And I'm going to run to the center acting like, oh, I just went to someone's desk and uh, they said they're a uh, ghost whisperer, but I pulled trapper. That means that they are not good. They're not a villager. So I'm going to ring the bell. Now, I rung the bell and you're going to hear a ringing noise. It's going to be ding, 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 ding. So now that the bell is ringing, everyone's going to have to try and run here to the center. And uh, once you're here, you're going to have a list. Uh, you can either abstain and skip. Or vote anyone that's in the game. So let's say that the player was uh, uh, me, because I'm the only player in here. So I figured out that I, I was not a trapper because I couldn't be a trapper. Okay, let me say that in not a confusing way. So Dash is uh, said he's a ghost whisperer, but I pulled trapper on his desk. That means that he is not a villager. So we're gonna vote So Dash in here. So Dash, you're in the cage. Who are you? What do you do? Oh, I'm um. I am a, a, a shapeshifter, and I shapeshift. That, okay, well, uh, because you're a shapeshifter, that means you're good. Yeah, okay, cool. So I'm gonna live. Yay, because I'm a shapeshifter. Shapeshifter is a neutral role. Shapeshifter is part of the stranger rules, which they are a neutral role. The, the shapeshifter's main goal is to find a particular role. They want to find someone who is a trapper, who is a seer, whatever, right? And once they find that person, they're gonna target them, and it will poison them. Then, if you're nice you're gonna antidote the person after you poison them after that you basically won the game you just have to survive to the end of the game uh then for shapeshifter every day you're gonna pick up a new ability from a random player which is kind of a cool thing you you can get the uh, spike ability for trapper you can get the pike ability for guard right it's back to the detective though we were about to burn sodash because we pulled trapper on his desk and he said he was ghost whisperer but then he was actually said that he was uh shapeshifter and shapeshifter is neutral all right that's how you use the uh look for clues the next one is sneak out do you sneak out you're gonna press b during the night and you're gonna leave your house you're gonna wake up and you'll be able to move around at 50 percent the speed you're gonna want a protection potion going out as sneak out because you're gonna die 
die. You can have a high chance of dying if you don't have a protection potion. For your passive abilities, um, they're really not all that important. Guard. You have the secret protector, which will allow you to put down a post in, in, or in any part of the map. If uh, anyone walks over the post during the night, it'll automatically teleport you to that post. You have pike stab ability, which you can use to pike stab anyone during the night. You have intimidating shout, which when you use that on anyone else, it will slow their speed by 50%, making it easier for you to, uh, to attack them. You also have bulwark, which means... You uh, take 25% less damage. Instead of being a one-hit KO, you're then a four-hit. It takes four hits to kill you. After the guard is the medic. The, mar- the medic has first aid, which anyone who has 24 health or less will then be healed. Can be healed by a medic. You can also do a health check, which means uh, you can check someone, and if it shows they have half a heart, it's going to pop like a heart above their uh, above their body. And if it shows half a heart, they have half health. You have defiance aura, uh, which is going to show a circle around your body, around yourself. Anyone in that circle will not get assassinated at all. After that, you're going to have resist poison, which means you take 50% less uh, damage from poison. Instead of taking two ticks, you're going to take one per tick. For the conspirator rules, these are the bad guys. You have barbarian. You can sprint, which means you uh, move. 6% faster for 10 seconds. You have intimidating shout, which like the guard means you can shout and slow people down. Now, every conspirator has assassination and act cleave. Assassination is your day kill. You can only have one day kill per day. One kill per day, right? And then per night, you get your axe cleave. Once again, one axe cleave kill per night. Then again, every conspirator is also going to have this night walker uh, passive ability. That Nightwalker passive ability is going to be on every single conspirator. For the slanderer, you have fake emergency, which means you can do a fake bell ring, which is should freak everyone out. Oh, you know, we're going to go to the bell, right? Which will give you a chance to kill. You have face morph, which means you can morph into any other player. You will become that player. You look just like them. Just don't talk because if uh, you're not going to sound like them. And then again with that assassination, axe cleave, and nightwalker. Thief will give you the ability to pickpocket people and plunder from their chests. Just like the Ghost Whisperer where you can go into dead people's chests and take things from dead people's chests, the thief can go into anyone's chest, dead or alive, and take anyone from their chest. You also, every day, you reduce the chance of being caught by pickpocketing by 5%. You start off at a 25% chance of getting caught. So the next day will be 20, the day after that 15, the day after that 10, right? For smuggler, you have blast rubble, which means you can go underground and blow up someone's hatch to their home. You have secret trade, which gives you the ability to buy from any store anywhere at any time. And you also have the ability to buy any item for less than what it actually is. 20% less than what it actually is. You reduce the amount of trap damage too. So if you walk over a tra- Trap, you don't take as much damage as you would if you were any other conspirator. The ni- necromancer is scary. You have command undead patrol, which in order to use that, you're going to want to use seed of the undead. Seed of the undead will bring any dead player you can use on any dead player and it will rise them from the dead as a zombie. You then use command undead patrol to make them go to a certain part of the map. You also have a dog. This dog will get another kill for you. So not only can you get one kill per night with your axe, you can also get another kill per night with your dog as long as they're able to do enough damage. The dog does like 15 or about 10 damage every like five seconds or something like that. After the necromancer, you're going to get into strangers. You have the shapeshifter, which I went over before. You will then have the ritualist. The ritualist is a very hard roll, and I'm going to have to do another game to show you the ritualist. So we'll get back to the rituals later. Just to start off with, because really I've gone over everything I kind of can right now in this game. Uh, So I'm going to have to start another lobby, right? So, as you can see, I just jumped from there to here. This is where one of the areas you can jump off as a ritualist. You're going to want to jump up here. And then from here, you can go ahead and jump and you're going to want to hit the hatch. Boom. I hit the hatch and I died. Which is going to end the game, hopefully. If not, then I can show you ghost stuff. Okay, it did not end the game, which is fine. Because now we're a ghost and we can do ghost things. One thing I did not show you as a, as a live player, which I mean, I can show you as a dead player anyways, it doesn't matter, is questing. Underneath you, you're going to have quests. You're going to see these arrows, and each of these arrows is going to take you to another quest. So I'm going to follow the arrows underneath my feet right now to start questing. This is the first quest. I'm going to want to press X, and it's going to give me an objective. Find the black obelisk in the fortress ruins, and it's going to give me a description. I am not reading that. It's going to give me a reward, 10 coins. So I'm going to accept that, and I'm going to go to the obelisk, right? Now, normally, if there were other players in the game, I could come over here to this purple ghost. I would press X on the purple ghost, and it's going to give me things I can buy. These are abilities. Normally, I would buy living attachment, which will teleport me to other live players. But since there are no other live players, I'm going to go ahead and get otherworldly dash, which will allow me to just dash around like so. So now I'm going to go and find the black obelisk in the ruins to complete this quest. 
This portal here is how you get from the live world to the dead world. It's a very important portal to know about. I'm just going to follow this green arrow underneath my feet till I find until it takes me to where uh, it want, I need to go for the quest, right? So now I found the black obelisk. I'm going to want to press it and it's going to say yada yada yada, you did the quest. Now that I'm here, it's going to give me another quest. I'm going to have to find three items in my objective and it's going to give me another description. It's going to give me more if I completed this one though. Now that I picked up the hat, I'm going to need to go back to the dead world, which I'm simply just going to follow the arrow. It's pointing to the direction back in the dead world. Now I'm just going to keep following the arrow, keep using my ability to try and go as fast as I can to the quest. Now that I accepted that quest, I can come over here and buy more abilities. So as a ghost, you have all these abilities. You have the healing ward. When you use this ability, it will heal any living player. You have greedy ghost. This will steal 10 coins from any living player and convert it to five spirit tokens. Spirit tokens is the dead coins, right? Past inheritance will give 20 coins to a living player. Disarming presence. If you use that and go over traps during the night, it will trigger the traps. Invisibility shroud will make people invisible during the night. Really good. After that, you're going to come over here to the ghost trader. You're going to have disrupting bomb. You're going to have corpse marker. You're going to have transcending alarm. And after that, poltergeist, 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 whatever. Dis disrupting bomb. You can buy that as a conspirator ghost or whatever. It, you, you don't have to be a conspirator ghost. You can buy a disrupting bomb as a ghost, take it underground and blow any hatch to a living player's house or to any house to help out the conspirators. You can also use corpse marker on a dead body. It will make a very loud, uh, a glowing noise over their body. So people will be like, oh, there's a dead body over here. You have transcending alarm. You use transcending alarm to wake up a living player. If you know a, con a conspirator is about to run in a living player's house during the night, use that to wake them up and hopefully give them a chance to run away. Poltergeist, you have three of them. You can, if you want to, you can send these out in the world and they'll do like 10 damage to a living player if they get to, if the player gets too close to them. You can see in the top right where the minimap is, just underneath the minimap is going to be a red and a blue emblem on either side of a versus. There's going to be a circle that will slowly go around. You can see on the right, on the blue side, there is a little bit of a blue line. The further that goes around, the more quests are being completed by a villager. Now, on the red side, if there's a red line over there, that means conspirators are completing quests once that gets halfway to that little diamond there at the bottom of it at the bottom of the emblem a full moon will happen for the villagers a full moon means everyone will be awake during the night now once that on the conspirator side once that quest line gets to the bottom fog will appear which will make it very hard to see during the day and make the make it easier for the conspirators to uh, get their assassinations underneath that is quests that's just going to give you the uh, uh objective basically for your quest and at the bottom of that is your goal which is basically, you know, I want to find all the conspirators and burn them and yada yada yada. Now, I don't know what else to do there for uh, this game, so I'm going to have to leave and come back as Rituals. I have now set up a custom game mode to show you how to play Rituals. So, I'm going to have Steel Life Essence and Dark Idol. First thing you're going to want to do as Rituals generally is use your right trigger to then use this. You're going to want to select the living player and press A on them, and it will put what's called a craft curse doll in your inventory. From then, it's gonna be this little purple thing. I'll show the icon of it. You're not gonna to wanna to get caught doing any of this because Originalist is a bad guy. Don't get caught doing any of this, right? But let's say you have one of those cursed craft dolls in your inventory. You're gonna to wanna to come over here very soon throughout the game and use your A ability to trigger this circle. This circle will give you, instead of having 100 health, it will take 200 health. So what it does is it takes 50 health from the player you targeted and then doubles your health, which is good. After you double your health, you're going to want to find another player to uh, target, right? So you're going to come up to another player and you're going to use your right trigger and press A on them. And you're going to make a, uh, another curse craft in your inventory. After that, you're going to want to press B. And when you press B, it will give you the uh, ability to place a totem. You're going to want to place a totem, which I will show you what a totem is on the screen. When you place a totem, it will then link you with a player. What that means is that when you take damage, they also take damage. So whenever, ta whenever you take two damage, instead of you taking two damage, you will take one and they will take one. The damage is split between you and whoever you is linked up to. You can link up to as many people as you want, but just know that the more people you link up to, the more your damage is split between everyone else. During the night, you can run around. You can see I'm awake during the night. I can run around and do whatever I want. It's perfect that my house is right there because then I can very easily come over to one of the areas to show you. So this is one of the areas you can jump off. I will have to show you tomorrow when I wake up. Let's say you have double health. You have 200 health, right? You hooked up to someone. So you're going to come over here. You're going to want to place a totem somewhere where you think no one can find it. You're going to run a run up these stairs. After this, jump here on this little, uh, little shoot off stone. 
and then jump one more up to another stone up here and then jump to this path. After that, go ahead and run the rest of the way up these stairs. After you get the rest of the way up these stairs, you can then jump off here to that hatch door down there. You see that hatch door? So you would jump down here and then what that would do is that would give you 50 damage. Normally that would be 100 damage, but like I said before, it splits between you and whoever you're hooked up with. So if you are only hooked up to one other person, that will give you 50 damage and then 50 damage. From then, you're going to want to run as fast as you can back up here, over here, and climb back up again and try and jump off and kill them, right? Two jumps like that will kill anyone as long as they are not healing themselves with food. The next place you can jump off at is going to be over near the blacksmith hatch. So the blacksmith hatch is over that way. You can see the blacksmith store is right there. You're going to want to run up these stairs, like I said earlier. And this is where I jump. This, then you come over here and come over here and you jump down, right? Those are the two spots you jump off as a ritualist in order to do damage. Now, there are other things you can do. Any damage that happens to you as a ritualist is split. doesn't have to be fall damage. So if it's poison damage, you can poison yourself. If you know who a guard is, you can run up to a guard and have a guard do damage to you. If you know who a conspirator is, you can have a conspirator swing on you and have them do damage to you. All these are ways to be able to transfer hell or transfer damage from yourself to another player in order to help you win the game. Now, you're going to need to be buying food a lot as a ritualist. So you're going to want to be careful when you buy food. Don't be buying food in front of everyone and buy food before people start suspecting that you are a ritualist. That's a key thing. Buy food before people suspect that there is a ritualist. That's basically all you can do as a ritualist. So I'm going to go ahead and end this game and I'm going to show you the conspirator world. All right. So I set up a game to where I'm a necromancer. The necromancer is one of the most confusing conspirator rules to play as. So I figured this would be a good one just to run around and show you things as, as, a, as a conspirator. And you can see my Seed of Undead and Command Undead Patrol abilities I talked about earlier. As a conspirator, you can do many things. The biggest thing you can do is go underground. These hatches will take you underground. Now, I could not use them right now for some reason, which is weird. You can also see there is a hatch in your house. In every single house, there is a hatch. I forgot to mention earlier, but if you come down here, down the main road to the end of the map over here, you can then... Come up to this lady, and this is where you craft all your potions, right? This is where all the potions are crafted. Now, all the ingredients you use to craft the potions are in different parts of the map. So near where the crafting, the potion crafting area is the mushrooms. This is where you find the mushroom. As a conspirator, I'm going to spawn underground like so, right? Now that I'm underground, you can see I have my dog. This dog can help you out tremendously as a necromancer. First things first is you're going to have all these different areas. These are all going to lead me to different hatches above ground. If you come over here, this area over here is going to be all the hatches that will lead you to houses. Now, there's only going to be one hatch this time because it's just me playing the game, but they will be on both sides here normally. If I go up through here, it will take me right to my house, right? Now, for some reason, it's not me going back down hatches, which is kind of weird. The game gets really weird when there's only one player playing the game. It's okay. So normally, I would want to run around and try and go in someone's house and kill them. Whether I put them to sleep with a sleeping powder and kill them with my dog, or I just straight up use my axe and kill them with back with the other ingredients you're gonna have another area over here this is where the uh, herb vendor is right you can see this red mushroom here this is where you get all the red mushrooms all right the next area is going to be over here at the castle if you come inside the castle over here keep on running down this is where the crystals start to spawn you'll see them around this area and one's right here cool that is a crystal you can then run back up And right here is where the flowers start to spawn. The flowers have a pretty wide area. So there's a flower here. There's a flower right there you can see. There will be one that spawns here. And you can see there's like one that kind of looks like it has a bloom yet. That's where it will spawn, right? There's another flower that will spawn over here. And then another flower that will spawn down here, right there. And one right here. So they have a pretty wide area. There is one more ingredient I can show you. I just ran out of time to show you real quick. So it's nighttime again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so over here is the black market store. Only conspirators can use this. You can also get boots from here. This, again, boots are used to prevent getting uh, damage from traps. You have smoke grenades. You use a smoke grenade to hide the roll of a dead player. So you throw it on someone, and then if someone tries to check their roll, they cannot, they won't show them what the roll is. You have lockpick. So if someone buys a lock and locks up their house, you then have to buy a lockpick 
to unlock the house and be able to go in and still kill them. You have black powder. As a smuggler, like I said earlier, you have the ability to blow up hatches, right? You need to get the black powder in order to use that ability. In order to use that ability, you would just run to the hatch like I did earlier at my hatch at my, hatch, my ground. If that was a live player, a good player, there would be a brick wall in front of it. If you were a smuggler, you would use the ability in front of the stone wall at the hatch to blow it apart and then you can go to their hatch. Now, the last area where you can get ingredients from is going to be up these stairs. You're going to want to run up these wooden stairs as well. And you're going to see these. It's going to be these little uh, uh, gray deaths. These are the last things you can get. Now that I've got a bunch of different things, I can go and make a potion. So I, I come over here. I'm making a potion. I'm clicking A on the deadly poison because I want to poison myself. I'm going to go ahead and run to my hatch. Here's my hatch. So you can see there's like a wooden frame around it. Normally, if it was a good player, there would be a stone wall inside this wooden frame area that you would have to blow up. I'm going to go through my hatch and I'm going to poison myself. In order to poison myself, I'm going to press Y to open up my inventory. And this is how you use any potion ever, right? You have to use it on a cauldron of the player you want to use the potion on. So I'm going to poison myself and put it in my own cauldron. I get a little glow effect around it and I'm gonna it's going to show in a little bit that I'm poisoned. Alright, it's now the next day and you see there where it says you are poisoned and the Again, the green effect going around. And that means I have to then figure out a way to antidote myself. Oh no, I'm poisoned. Oh no. Right? Uh, I'm going to run over here again to this lady. And I'm going to craft an antidote. After crafting an antidote, I am, I am then going to run back. Back to my own house. And here's my cauldron. I'm going to put the antidote in my cauldron. And it's not going to say anything, but as you can see down there, my health is not going away anymore. That means I am healed. I'm antidoted. I don't have to worry about dying to the poison anymore. So... That's basically everything I can think of that a new player would need to know about the game. Definitely, I hope you watch to the end because that very end information there is important. Very important if you want to survive in this game. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace and victory!